the Sunnah of how to make the heart necessary to receive sincere advice. Similar to the way that you make the heart necessary or you make the heart fertile to receive the most necessary advice and the most necessary guidance of all time, which is the infallible speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That the heart has to be willing to receive even the Qur'an. There is no word that is greater than the Qur'an. There is no advice like the Qur'an. There is no guidance like the guidance of the Qur'an. It is perfect in every sense. Spoken by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meant for your heart to receive it. And even then, there are hearts that are described as being as hard as stone that cannot receive it. And there is no fault whatsoever in the Qur'an. The fault is in the heart that was unable to receive it. On the other hand, the opposite of that, may Allah Azza make our hearts the opposite of that. There are hearts that are like fertile soil. They receive the revelation and they continue to grow these beautiful crops, these beautiful plants, all stemming from that initial revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so there has to be the giver and the receiver. There has to be a heart that is ready. And if that is the case for the Qur'an, then certainly when it comes to the imperfect advice that we're commanded to give each other, where there is more room for things to be wrong in substance or in delivery, then the heart has to be at an even greater level of anticipation and desire to receive than that heart which is with the Qur'an, which is with the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you find so many ahadith that stress this communal role amongst us. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa speaking about the believers as being mirrors to one another. A mirror shows you things that you otherwise cannot see. It shows you flaws that you otherwise cannot see. You know, if you look in the mirror and there is a stain on your shirt, then that's how you detect that stain. If there's something that's on your face, that's how you detect that thing that's on your face. That's the function of that mirror. And for the believer to the believer, you are the spiritual mirror of every brother and sister in this ummah. You're their spiritual mirror. That means that there is a necessary cleansing mechanism that you have to have for yourself. And there's a function that you serve to your brother and your sister. And if you don't serve that function, then you are the defective mirror. And subhanAllah, you find this emphasis on the collective decay of mankind being tied to the unwillingness of people to advise one another anymore. When the Prophet ﷺ mentions that the people will be in khayr, they will be in good, so long as they enjoy in good and forbid evil amongst themselves. Now typically, we might resort to when we read a hadith like that, this idea that evil becomes so emboldened and when it's unchallenged, it only grows. And that's true. But there's another set of people, a large set of people, that aren't necessarily evil, that aren't necessarily emboldened in their evil, but they just don't know any better because there's a collective leaving off of this nasiha, this culture of advising one another, of enjoining good and forbidding evil, trying to build one another up to be pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Imam al-Ghazali, rahimahullah, he says something very profound in his ihya. He says, think about a person who had a scorpion on their back. You know, we're, we can relate maybe to mosquitoes right now in Texas, but if you had a scorpion on your back, and there was someone that was walking behind you and that noticed that scorpion that was on your back, before it bit you, and they didn't tell you before it bit you. He said, similarly, when we have these character flaws that become obvious to people around us, and our brothers and sisters don't point them out, it's like a scorpion that is there about to bite you. You have a responsibility to say to your brother or your sister, I see a scorpion that you might not see. Not because you can't see, but it happens to be on your back. And I want to point it out to you, not so that you scream a little you know, quieter once the scorpion bites you so that I can actually stop you from you know, suffering maximum damage through the bite of that scorpion. Perhaps I can stop it from biting you in the first place if I intervene early enough. Or I can help you get treated quickly. But the point is, is that as people, when we walk around and we have scorpions on us, we want people to point that out to us. We want people to point out that harm because it poses an imminent physical harm. What about spiritual harms? What about spiritual diseases? And subhanAllah, you find there's a man by the name of Abdullah ibn Mubarak rahimahullah ta'ala. And you can find entire books that are just people asking Abdullah ibn Mubarak rahimahullah for advice and him responding with profound advice. 
And there came a time clearly where he stopped giving people advice. And he was asked, aren't you going to advise us? And he said, is there anyone who's still looking for advice? I don't find that people are interested in hearing nasiha anymore. I don't find that people are interested in having things pointed out to them. I find that people seem to have turned away from this. And he's talking about it at that time. And as a result of that, who suffers? Not the person that no longer gives advice, but the person that could have received really good advice, necessary advice to make themselves more pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 